people that I know that I respect and like always bounce ideas off. And I'm like, should I re- release this as a VHS album? And they're like, well, it, it kind of works, right? Welcome to a special bonus episode of the Dreams of Conscious podcast, where we're joined once again by Mike Hutchins from VHS. Mike, how are you? I'm good, man. It's uh, I think this is three years in a row, so we're like uh, we're on a bit of a streak here. It's awesome. Three years in a row, three Halloweens in a row. It's Halloween, and there's a VHS album coming out. What are the odds? Yeah, no kidding, eh? <laughs> So let's jump into it. Uh, tell me about Deep Gashes and Long Lashes. It's kind of a weird one. It it almost didn't even really start as a VHS album. I was just, it kind of started as a bit of an experiment. I kind of wanted to see if I could write some music kind of similar to like Italian horror movie soundtrack stuff or like Giallo soundtrack stuff. So it basically just started with me experimenting with some synth plugins, uh, actually like since the pandemic, we've been kind of doing more like home recording stuff and like sharing files with each other, like with uh, the members of the band and like been getting more into like doing stuff at home. And like, I just wanted to, I like, I'm a guitar player through and through, like I don't play keyboard. Like I know the notes on the piano, but not really, not really anything more than that. So it was like, okay, let's get these plugins and like see what we can do. And like, so uh, it actually started, it was all going to be instrumental. I think I had like four or five songs written and I'm like, you know what? Let's see what this sounds like with guitar added. And I really liked what it was, how it turned out. And I'm like, okay, well, let's try vocals. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. And like, it didn't really start as a VHS album, but it kind of morphed into one over time. And it's definitely like a, a, like a, I don't want to say it's kind of like a curveball for us because it's we've always done it, weird stuff and like taking chances and uh, whatever, but like it's definitely the most soundtrack kind of thing we've ever done, and like I'm really happy with how it turned out. 
so to be clear, this is all you, right? This is you with a drum machine and a synth. Yeah. So like we're we're working on like an actual VHS album with like all the guys and like yeah, basically it was like I didn't even know what I wanted to do with it. I just started recording and like working on stuff and like before I knew it, I had like an album on my hands. So I'm like, well, what the hell do I do with this now? And so I I I. I brought it up to the other guys and I said like, Hey, like I did this album. Like it was kind of like an experiment to see like what would like, what I could do with like this type of style. And like, I I don't want to exclude you guys from this, but like, this is kind of like my baby and like my like experiment, whatever you want to say. And like, and the guys were cool with it. Like, I mean, I, I, I hate excluding them from anything, but like, it was kind of like, I was so focused on like just getting this done that I wasn't even thinking of it as like a VHS album. And then like after it was done, like just talking to like record label, record label friends and like pe- people that I know that I respect and like always bounce ideas off. And I'm like, should I re- release this as a VHS album? And they're like, well, it, it kind of works, right? It's like horror themed and you know, so it works. And it's like, so yeah, it's a VHS album, but it's all me. That's part of the reason why I kind of wanted to do like the Italian name. Uh, like, so like if you get the CD, like the name on the front of it, and like on the album cover is like, oh, I'm, I don't even want to want to attempt to say it because I'm not Italian. But like basically we took Violent Homicidal Slasher and I had one of my uh, buddies translate it to Italian for us. So that's what we did with the uh, the name of the band for the thing. But it's all me. Yeah. So because I already have a history of mispronouncing things in foreign languages on this podcast, I'm not afraid to uh, mispronounce things in Finnish or Swedish or Danish or uh, occasionally in Hebrew. So let me let me give this a shot. Violento smembratore omosida. There you go. How's that? It has a good ring to it. <laughs> yeah, we were. I was. I was actually going to go even one step further and I was like, I was going to do the album title and like all the song names in Italian. And I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe this reel it back a little bit. Like we want people to actually like know what the names of the songs are, you know? So, I mean, you could, you could go the full Giallo concept and have several English titles for one Italian title, right? Yeah. 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 Since some of these movies had, uh... <laughs> so, you know, you described the process of, of experimenting with the synths and uh, uh, the different elements during the pandemic. And, you know, even without being told that that's what you were doing, this did feel very much like a, a pandemic project. Do you know what I mean? Like this, this sounds like like you had you had some time to yourself and uh, got to experiment with the software or the, uh, the new technology and, and come up with something. I think... It, because, you know, to be fair, there have been a few bands that are doing Carpenter-esque stuff or, you know, horror soundtrack synth stuff. I think what's especially great about this is you're able to work that back into VHS's sound and not ditch the, you know, the heavy guitars and the the guttural vocals. And I think that's what makes it special. Yeah, Yeah, that's actually like... Part of what, like, the whole train of thought and, like, the creative process kind of stemmed from two things. Like, a band I really like called Fulci. Their last album was called Exhumed Information, and they kind of collaborated with uh, another Italian, like, synth project called TV Crimes. And, like, it's kind of like half the album's death metal and half the album was, like, instrumental, like, horror movie kind of stuff. And that's kind of what got the ball rolling in my brain. Like, um, okay, well, what if, what if I did something like this, but like it was all combined together, like, you know, the death metal and the soundtrack stuff was mixed together. And like, another thing was like uh, the blood incantation time wave zero was like, kind of made me think about that too, because that, that was more like ambient than like actual like horror movie soundtrack. But like, I'm like, it made me think like, okay, like, let's try to do like this stuff, but mix it with, with the death metal and see what happens. And like, it, I think it came out really cool. So. Yeah, it's great. And and even the, the drum machine, a lot of the, those, those old soundtracks were very much very processed and very, uh, they used classic drum machines and, and classic synths. And that was a big part of that sound as well. So working that into, 
working that into VH's sound, I think, uh, added a, a new and, and different element. I mean, I'm a little bit biased because, you know, I, I was a teenager when I heard stuff like Ministry and Screw and, you know, stuff like that for the first time, industrial metal, industrial death metal. Yeah. Um, but I always I always felt like that was a sound that, uh, when it's done well, is is really great. Yeah, that's actually funny too because like I've never I've never had so much trouble like finding record labels to release stuff as I did with this album. Like ev- everybody that would hear it, like I don't I don't think they quite understood like the the horror movie side of it. It was more like they kind of saw it like as an industrial album, and I'm like, well, yeah, right. and it's like okay, I, I kind of I get that, but like. I don't get it at the same time. You know what I mean? Like to me, when I listen to it, I don't like, it doesn't scream industrial. So like, that was kind of frustrating. It's like to uh, throw it out there to the world. And it's like, okay, I'm, not many people get it, but like, now, finally, like I talked to Mike and he, he got it. Like he's a big horror movie fan. So he understood what the album was trying to do. So um, that was awesome to finally have somebody on board that got it. Not like saying, Oh, it's an industrial album. I'm not releasing this. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> not an industrial album <laughs> I mean it, it both is and isn't right like because I think whenever you put guitars with a drum machine people are automatically going to say industrial even though that wasn't actually your intention your intention was something yeah else. I mean like more, more so the drum machine was just because like if you listen to a lot of the like the 80s soundtracks and like the, especially like all the synth based stuff like it's totally drum machine right you know and it's like even even had that conversation with our drummer Andy like when like I finished the album and I'm like I sent it to the guys to check out and he's and he's like like do you want me to try to like play drums over this and I'm like you know I felt kind of selfish but I'm like you know what I kind of like it with the drum machine like it just it's very like there's some songs where there's like barely any guitars you know it's like it's a very synth and electronic kind of sounding album right so it's like i kind of felt bad excluding him from playing drums on it but like at at the end of the day i'm like that to me like the drum machine just serves the songs better and your guitar playing and maybe this is also where where people are getting the industrial thing from uh, your, your guitar playing from for this album is a little bit different than what you usually do right it's more restrained it's more uh big power chords and just kind of laying a foundation yeah, it's it's like there's some songs where it's like there's literally like only one guitar riff in the whole song, right? Like it was very it it, it actually took a while like cuz when I first like when I was first working on the stuff and experimenting a little bit, I would I was kind of trying to approach it like the normal VHS song like it would be like guitar from like, you know, beginning of the song to the end of the song and it just it didn't work. It took a little bit of experimenting to figure out like what actually made sense and a lot of it was like letting the synths breathe more like it was like maybe like that this part has a guitar to make it a little bit heavier and like this part has it like just to make the synth stand out a little bit more but like there's like the title track is like i think there's only guitar in like two parts of the song
So you mentioned the the influence of old Gallo scores and old Gallo soundtracks. Was there a specific composer, or maybe a specific uh, soundtrack, or a few of them that you were trying to emulate? Nothing like nothing too specific. Like I think a lot of the Giallo soundtracks are actually not as synth based as like what we like. I kind of ended up doing. Yeah, they tend to be more like psychedelic, right? Yeah, it's like more like almost jazzy and like it's more like there's definitely keyboards and synths, but it's more like drums, bass and like really minimalistic like drumming. And like so I, I think it's kind of more like hits on like the 80s kind of stuff. And I think one that really influenced it was the uh, Tenebrae soundtrack. Like that one in particular, like is really like I don't know if it's synth heavy, but it's like. It's more driving and it's not as like laid back as a lot of the stuff from like the 60s and 70s. And like that one kind of really influenced like what I wanted to do with the synths. And then like I kind of just experimented and came up with stuff that I thought was cool and kind of just tried to, it wasn't trying to like mimic any particular like soundtrack or a composer, but like just trying to like, get that feel more than anything you know what i mean like just just like if you hear it you, you want okay that kind of sounds like italian horror movie music you know that's what more what i was going for yeah i mean i, w- I was thinking a little bit of see i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna reveal my ignorance now because i can't remember now uh, which movie i was thinking of but one of the Fulci movies i think it was city of the living dead where there was a repeating kind of synth and it may not even have been a drum machine, I'm, I'm not sure, but it was like a very basic, uh, simple synth melody or keyboard melody with drums under it and I think probably a bass line as well. And, you know, during key moments, that theme would, would keep coming back in over and over and over again. And I think it was probably Fabio Fritzi who composed it, but it was really effective just for how simple it was and uh, the way it was used. Yeah, he was he, he was definitely a big influence too. Like the the music in all those uh, Fulci movies is all really really amazing. It's actually like a very western influence too. Like if you listen to like I think the Beyond in particular has a real western feel to some of the the music too. It's like it's very cool music and like def, definitely any of the stuff he's done that's more synth based is definitely a big influence on the album for sure. Tell me about some of the the guests that you have joining on this album. I didn't really have a plan for the guests at all, but like one of the things I, I knew I wanted was that any of the guests that I did get, I wanted to make sure were from Italian bands just to really, you know, uh, hammer home the point of it being an Italian like influenced album. So like I've been writing the guys in Fulci for a, a long time now and just never, never uh, had the opportunity to have Fiore on a song. So uh, it was cool to have him on a song those guys are doing really well right now and all their stuff is really good alessio from guinea pig is on a song their new album this year that they released is really really awesome it's a really cool kind of a different take on gore grind it's almost genty gore grind it's hard to explain but i really dig those guys so i was excited to get him on a song and then tenero is doing uh really well this year too they released a really awesome album that I have no idea what it's called. I know it's in Italian. I, I bought it, but I can't tell you the name of it, but it's really good. So we have him, the singer from that band, on a song. And then we have Ricky from uh, Gollum of Gore on a song too, who's a band that I really like, really noisy, like gross gore grind, kind of last days of humanity kind of band. So it was cool to have him on a, a song and bring in like more of like pitch shifted type of style to the song that he's on. So that was cool to see. How, how did you choose who did vocals for which song? No, honestly, I don't even remember. I knew the only one that, that really stood out that I knew I needed. Obviously, it makes sense to have the dude from Fulci be on a Fulci song, right? So we, uh, <laughs> it was the, the New York Ripper was Quack Quack was right from the get go. I knew that he was going to be on that song. And then just the other songs were just ones I thought were cool. And I, I wanted to have like a different voice on. None of the other bands, aside from Tenebro, are really horror influenced. So, like, it didn't, there wasn't like an obvious choice for any of them. But I think the song that Alessio from Guinea Pig on, is on, Filthy Slimy Pervert, Tenebro, Tenebrae rather, song. So, that one was cool. And then uh, the dude from Tenebro is on 
Uh, Murder Witness Through Hallucinogens, which is about Death Walks at Midnight. And then Ricky from Gollum and Gore is on I Want Your Eyeball, which is, imagine that about the movie Eyeball. So yeah, I was like, the one with Fulci was more planned, but the rest were just whatever I thought they would sound cool on. And as you mentioned, uh, you're back with Harpain Gore Death for this release. Did did Mike hear, or did Mike know what you were working on before you, you sent the album to him, or did he hear it cold, so to speak? Yeah, and you heard it basically cold so it was like i kind of like i sent it around to like a few of well actually quite a few labels and like it basically everybody said no and like oh no and i we can't release that it's too industrial like it's not gonna sell and all this stuff and i'm just like it was kind of defeating for sure especially since i thought we had something cool and like honestly i didn't even think of mike and then just all of a sudden i'm like oh yeah mike because we've worked with him in the past not we've we've actually surprisingly enough never done like actually like a physical release with him but he's helped us with digital in the past so it's like this is actually the first cd we've done with him so it's cool like he uh right away actually i emailed him and sent it to him and like he was he got back to me within like hours and he's like yeah this is cool i i really like it and like let's do it and like initially we were planning to have the album out in december and then like he's like well let's try for halloween so it's like oh shit even sooner so that's awesome so uh, yeah we got everything together pretty quick since the album was done anyways so yeah it's been cool mike's been really supportive and like promoting the album so far has been really good and like uh, we've uh, had lots of stuff show up online with people talking about the album so i'm excited for it to come out yeah and i think the, the labels that passed on this are probably going to be kicking themselves in a couple of years i mean my inbox is flooded with you know updates about like ghost and Petterbater and uh you know all these you know I, I know you don't want to call this an industrial album but bands that are doing something similar with like you know the synths and the drum machines and stuff like that and i don't know i mean it's hard to say right now if if this is going to be like the next big thing or whatever but there are definitely a lot of people gravitating towards that sound yeah i mean like i I don't mind people calling it industrial like we've always been kind of all over the place style wise anyways you know what i mean so it's like people can call us whatever they want and like if people think it's industrial and people like it then that's cool like i mean i think I think a good song is a good song. So it's like, it might even appeal to people that don't even know what Italian horror movie music is and just think it sounds cool. So that, that, that I'm, I'm okay with that too. You know, like we don't exclude anybody. So like, Hey, you're not the biggest horror buff and you think it sounds cool. Like start following us and maybe you'll learn a few cool movies to check out. And then that, it's a win-win situation.
speaking of a f- few cool movies to check out since uh, since I have you and I like to probe you for for horror movie recommendations, let's talk about Giallo. Well, first of all, is it is it Giallo or is it Giallo? Because I think I've been saying it wrong for twenty years. Who who knows? Like we we've always talked about where us pronouncing things wrong. I'm I'm pretty sure it's Giallo, but like I said, I'm not Italian, so I I mean. We, we, who knows if any of us are saying these things right? All the Italian people could be laughing at us when we try to pronounce this stuff. So who knows? Well, I, since I'm editing this podcast, I'll, I'll say it both ways, and whichever, uh, whichever way is correct, I'll, I'll just copy and paste the correct way in, so I, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But the funny thing is, you know, you mentioned you've you've been we, we've done a horror themed. Uh, Halloween themed podcast uh, three years in a row, and a lot of the the movies that you're you're writing about on this album or you wrote about on this album are things that you uh, that you actually recommended to me like two or three years ago. Uh, whatever happened to Solange? A lot of the Valencia stuff, like was it Napoli Violenta, which is a band now, by the way. There's a band called Napoli Violenta. So, and I'm finally getting around to some of the recommendations. Like, I just watched uh, a Lenzi movie uh, a couple nights ago, and I watched um, Burial Ground, which he recommended to me uh, last night. Oh, nice. Nice. I think the difference between Giallo and horror, there's a subtle difference, because they're not quite the same thing, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I I guess at the end of the day, like, a lot of people think they're kind of, like, slasher movies, but, like... I don't know like to me it's like a giallo movie is like way more stylish like it's always like very like big set pieces and like the music is almost like a character and like they're all like essentially like murder mysteries right like it's like there's always the killer you know they're in like where's black glove or black jacket or whatever you know like so it's like they're kind of like slasher movies but not and like just Sometimes they don't make a lot of sense, but it's like, <laughs> some t- you know, it's like, actually, I was talking to somebody uh, earlier in the week and we were talking about Giallo movies, how like, sometimes it's a little bit style over substance where it's like, the movies have like a ton of style, but it's like, at the end of the day, they don't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. But that's cool. They're just, they're just this weird anomaly of a style of movie that like has awesome music, awesome, like, awesome gore like beautiful women like always cool like locations and like they're just a cool type of movie you know and like i think if anybody hasn't like gone down the giallo rabbit hole it's like a cool cool rabbit hole to go down for sure yeah i mean i think i think you nailed it when you said murder mystery it seems like the driving element to uh, giallo are or is uh a murder mystery or a series of murders that needs to be solved and so you have some kind of like reporter or private investigator you know trying to figure out who the killer is and you know oftentimes in these movies not always but uh oftentimes the twist is that the killer is actually a woman which uh you know again like as as much as like slasher movies are about killers uh running around and, and chopping up women um the giallo had strange kind of gender politics going on in their movies that were different from a lot of the american horror movies yeah i, I don't know i don't know if i like not to get all like political or philosophical or whatever you want to say i don't think i don't know if i'd say the italian movies were as exploitive towards women i mean there's a lot of naked women in them but like it's not like I don't want to say it's like almost it's like artsy, you know, like it's not like I don't know, like they're just kind of artsy movies in general. So it's like and then, like you said, like a lot of the movies like the spoiler, like uh, Eyeball, the killer is a woman, you know, and other ones, too. So it's like they definitely do throw that trope out the window. But yeah, I don't know. I like Jala movies. Obviously, I, if I wrote an album about them, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Do you want to do you want to pick a couple that you wrote about on this album and uh, uh, just give an overview of, of what people can can expect from them? Yeah, I'd say like like if if you're new to Jalo movies, the two that I always recommend for people to check out are um, Deep Red and Tenebrae. If 
honestly, like, there's other directors Which that are, are both really, Argento, right? Yeah, I was gonna say there's other there's other directors that are 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 good when it comes to Giallo, but I don't think anybody's quite as good as Argento. Like just the the violence and the set pieces, the camera work. He always has amazing soundtracks. Like usually Goblin, but not always. Just like if you, if you watch Tenebro or Tenebrae and deep red and you enjoy them then you're probably gonna want to deep into the like dip your toes into more giallo flicks like but if you don't like them then it's probably not gonna be something that you enjoy like it's almost like the that's almost like the test you know like you check out these two and it's like if you dig it then you uh then you'll want to check out more it's funny too my wife can't stand italian horror movies like she just it's one of the things like well, we always watch movies together and like anytime I like want to watch an Italian movie, she's like, no, nope, I'm not watching that socially. They go and do something else or just uh, do something on her phone. But they're definitely an acquired taste. Right. So, I mean, like those are the two that I would say, like, give those a chance. If you dig that, then start, you know, looking at more like, I don't want to say obscure ones, but like looking at like the Lindsay Jollos and like, Sergio Martino Giallo's and like all the. I mean, do you want to do you want to pick one from from Lindsay that you sang, sang about on this album, and another one from uh, uh, what was the other name? Martinez. Uh, Martino. Actually, we don't have any songs. We don't have any uh, songs on uh, the album that, uh, based on anything he did, but he's got a lot of well-known ones. But his probably his most well-known one is Torso, which is really good. It's like lots of cool like set pieces in that one and like scantily clad women hanging out in the villa, you know, when there happens to be a murder, you know, of course, because, you know, that's just how things are. Um, but that, that one is really cool because I love, like the killer and it's like, he uh, wears like a ski mask. He's almost like a very fashionable killer. It's kind of weird to say, but like he, he looks cool while he kills people. Lindsay has done lots of cool stuff. Like he, he's kind of like, he doesn't get his due for being prolific. Because he's he's started in like the sixties, like with Giallo. He did like crime movies in the seventies and then they did horror and he like basically like aside from Cannibal Holocaust, he did like the most well known cannibal movies. So like my favorite Giallo that he did is Eyeball, in which we have a song on the album about. And another another really cool killer, you know, it wears like the uh, I don't even know what the hell it is. It's like a red red almost like a raincoat with a hood and like you know just very cool like and like that a lot of people actually say that's probably his best movie i'd probably agree with that it's probably my favorite movie that he's done and like aside from that he's got some older ones with uh, odd titles like orgasmo and not the not the south park one but uh, orgasmo and a few other ones that are definitely worth checking out too and I'll throw in some recommendations. Um, the editor was a, a recent movie made by the Astron Six guys. Astron Six is a, a Canadian production company that does a lot of kind of homages to classic B movie and uh, classic horror movies. Um, and the editor was their tribute to Italian Giallo. And another two, which were done by a husband and wife directing team, whose names I can't remember right now, but the movies are called. Amer or Amer, A M E R, and uh, the other one is the strange color of your body's tears, which are both extremely artsy, kind of ambiguous. I would say like modern, modern Giallo or maybe even deconstructionist uh, versions of Giallo that are, you know, obviously very inspired by uh, a lot of the tropes and a lot of the um, the stylistic tendencies of of those classic uh, Italian movies. Yeah, the editor is awesome. I, I really like that movie. Astron Six has made some really good movies. But yeah, they really nailed the tropes of Giallo movies in that one for sure. So, Deep Gashes and Long Lashes will be out on October 31st, Halloween of this year, through Horror Pain Gore Death. Mike, what's the best way to get the album? We we actually haven't... We aren't selling our copies yet until after release. So if you... I don't, I don't know the exact address but if you go to the horror pain gore death band camp they have it for sale we actually did a couple of cool t-shirts too so you can get 
those as well as the CD. I think uh, we did like a shirt that has like New York Ripper poster art on it. And we also did one with like a really cool gloved hand holding a bloody axe that a guy named Mitch, uh, Mitch Toxics Art did. Um, that turned out really cool. Well, it's actually a big part of the layout of the album. So yeah, we have the shirts, CD and bundles available on the Horror Pain Gore Death Bandcamp. If you can't find the link through Bandcamp, if you check us out on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash VHS Death Metal, you should be able to find the link there to order the album as well. And if people want to follow VHS online, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, like I said, our Facebook page, like facebook.com slash VHS Death Metal, or we have our Instagram page, Violent Homicidal Slash. If you, uh, if you search for us and you see a page that's mostly horror movie posters and horror movie stuff, then you probably found the right one. But yeah, we, uh, we're pretty uh, busy on social media. We're always posting movie recommendations or movie reviews almost, I guess. Thanks, Mike. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yeah, happy Halloween, guys, and thanks for having us.